guys, this is Bob with Taylor's Aquatics, and I'm going to, this is Christmas evening, uh, back from family events, ate too much, really had an awesome day with family, uh, but I've been procrastinating on resetting this tank for months, and it's almost to a critical condition now, and when I say reset, the primary goal is to get some substrate back in here. I've used sand in here. of dead stuff that needs to be uh, trimmed and rather than try to trim all this stuff I'm gently gently going to take these Amazons and maybe a couple other plants up and uh, trim all the dead stuff off maybe even trim the roots a little bit the roots you can see due to the loss of substrate even though I have been vacuuming it I should not have been vacuuming it and um, ever vacuuming it uh, I've lost over, oh gosh, probably three-fourths of the substrate. So uh, there might be, might be half an inch in there, and it's spread out fairly evenly. So I'm going to try to bring that up to maybe three inches, and I'm going to try to sandwich it between what's in there so that there's a very thin layer underneath and a thin layer above it. Uh, I'm going to reset some of the plants, as I said, uh, in that sand, and do a little bit of aquascaping. By this tank, but I would like a little uh, more open area in the front here uh, for the rainbows to swim. Uh, as it is, they are huddling in corners and um, they're really not enjoying the tank. I've also picked up some other new plants a couple days ago, uh, and I don't have much clue what they are other than there's some crypts and. Uh, maybe be a new kind of uh, hygrophila that I have not kept. I'm going to keep my uh, cypress helpherize. There are two of those, one in front, one in the back. Uh, I just need to repot them. What I've been doing is putting tunnels and things on plant roots, and uh, amazingly, it hasn't killed them yet. So, got some really nice java fern in here. Had a big blackberry algae problem treated that about a month ago one major time with hydrogen peroxide the whole wood was covered with it it killed it uh, and uh, so now the next step is to get this tank back into some shape also planning on pulling out the plate pods uh, the few gravels that are in here will stay in um, and I think that's about it just want to open it up refresh it try not to do any damage or minimize damage to bacteria in the substrate, but I do have to move it to uh, to do this. So let's check back in a little bit when I get the plants out. Alright guys, so I've got probably half the plants that uh, you can't really see here because there isn't any light. I can't see them. Uh, and I haven't cleaned them up yet. Um, but I wanted to show you something. Uh, one of the things that inspired me besides lack of compliments on the tank recently to do what I'm doing is Father Fish. Uh, he's an old time fish keeper. He's in his 70s, late 70s maybe. I'm 64 and when I was a kid and started keeping my first tank at seven, people like him were uh, young adults and that's who I learned to keep fish from. And over the years, many of those things have changed due to commercialism, telling us we need new products, we need this, we need that. Look at all the fish that are in here that you couldn't even see. Those big, big cardinals. We've got some green neons. There's my carry tetras. There's my rummy noses. Uh, seems like the rainbows are congregating down there. But back to what I was saying, he just did a video, Father Fish. I will not put a link in the description unless I remember to do so, but you can spell Father Fish. Uh, just type in Father Fish and he'll come right up. He just did a 
video on substrate and that really inspired me to get this tank back in the condition that I really set it up to be in and to function in and to um, control the uh, nitrates and so forth in this tank. But he talks in it about how you are very kind to the substrate and you try not to ever clean it. You don't try not to, you never do clean it. And how the things that are uh, pollutants and um, things that uh, are waste products actually go on the sand, then go down in the sand. And we've been taught we have to vacuum our sand. It's okay to use a toothpick to, pick to you know, keep the vacuum up, blah, 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 bull crap. We don't need to do that. Like he said, the stuff filters down through the sand where it is, watch this plant, where it is pulled over to the plant's roots. Look at all that stuff. And becomes new growth and makes new leaves. And what's happened to this tank, you can see that the plants have done well in here until recently. That was a little sample plant when I got it. This one came up on its own. Um, but yeah, look at these plants. These were little tiny sample plants when I got them several months ago. So let me quit uh, playing with the plants and get the plants cleaned up and get some sand in here. That was just the uh, blue tongue lizards uh, UV light coming back on next door there. All right, be back in a bit. Okay guys, it's literally two hours later, hour and 45 minutes later, and you can see the tank is still very cloudy. Part of that's from sand, and also part of it's a little bit from substrate, and also a little bit of it is from um, put just a tiny bit of aquarium co-op, maybe two squirts in here. Uh, they're easy green, and uh, yeah, I think that's everything that's making it appear cloudy. So you can't see all the way to the back. Really can't. So what I did was pulled out all the plants, all the plants, and cleaned them off fairly well. I didn't strip every leaf that's not completely gorgeous green. Uh, I reset the plants that were in there. Uh, every single plant. Uh, moved them. Uh, the new plants are also in there. And again, they came with no names, and I think this is some kind of hygrophila. Uh, this one was the one that's in the pot, um, and you'll notice that this is not symmetrical. It's not balanced. I hate that look. I do not like that in my tanks. Uh, some of those things are gorgeous, but that's not for me. Uh, I pulled out one of the um, caves, the pleco caves, since there are no plecos in here but I left two that I've seen uh, my single rope fish use and I've been looking for a couple of rope fish for a long time to add to the sky for like a month uh, but I moved one of the helper eyes over here the other one I moved back um, what else you see the rainbows that were all scrunched up in that corner hiding under plants and behind plants are out in the center now. They are colored up and uh, I did not do a water change. I, like I said, I just reset it. Look at all of the fish that are not hiding now that are out swimming and enjoying the tank, enjoying the current. Uh, the catfish have uh, been out partying as well. I don't see them now, but have a lot of catfish in here. Here comes the rope fish. Uh, I'm really, I think that may be a bacopa. I'm not sure there. I've got several sprouts of that, so I wanted to kind of bush that corner up, so I'm surfing there on the current. Uh, the great big piece of Mapani wood, big huge piece that was sitting in the center there for the past two years that I showed you that I pulled the algae off is over here. Uh, it's still a little hazy over there, so you can't see back there, but you can see all the java fern that's on it. Um, and that goes down all the way to the base of it. So that's a nice lush area back there. It's got wood for the quarry cats and whatever. I do still have sponge filters in here. Uh, one's behind that wood and one is over in this corner. 
and the sand I've kind of kind of got it down in a pit um, so I'll have to keep an eye on that to make sure where the sand's not touching the side I like a pit that it can just sit down in and not be so visible um, what else I guess that's it here come the catfish back around uh, again got several types in here so uh, those actually came from uh, Jason with Jadron Aquatics, the, the smaller ones. I already had a couple of the bigger ones, and there are a bunch more of them in here. Um, you can see the uh, Sturbi, got a bunch of those in here. So, yep, we've got a whole new tank, and I'll try to remember to just turn around one day when I'm sitting here at my desk and do a quick look at this uh, when it's cleared up, and uh, possibly even tomorrow. Um, Madagascar rainbows. You can see how big and pretty those are. But yeah, we'll let it clear up and come back to it another time. Thanks for watching. And the main thing is look at my substrate. I've got a good three, three and a half inches of sand. So happy, happy. Thanks.